sideways or something. I like when like... Pat Rose is sideways. <clears throat> there we go. I don't see him, though. We got this NBA game on. It's a 105-91. The Miami Heat look like they're going to go uh, and win this game and go yeah. up two games to none on the Indiana Pacers. But a man who rushed into the elevator, and fortunately, they did not turn the power off in Burbank because they have been turning the power off out there, Petros Papadakis, on Fox Sports LA, AM 570, the old P. What up, man? What's poppin', Tony? How are you? Can you hear me okay? It's great to be on. Well, thank you, Petros. I know we got you on, and you, you rushed to the thing. You were on the air, and you're going back on again this afternoon. But we got to get some action out of you. Now, you're moving all over the place. So you look, it looks like that vi- a video that uh, Deshaun Jackson posted of him getting swabbed, and the video is moving all around. Now, you locked in now? You got that camera locked? I'm ready. I'm ready to rock and roll, Tony. I'm, I'm good. It's locked. It's, it's leaning on my backpack. In one of these big conference rooms in the uh, in the building you used to work in here. In I love that building. Can you still, you still see have your the NBC? Old... Can you still see the NBC studios right there, right across the street in Burbank? Yeah. Do you want me to? Do you want me to show your audience? No, no, no. <clears throat> I'll, 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 I'm disappointed because, I because the phone. No, I'm disappointed because the great karaoke bar where we used to frequent is long gone now. What's the name of that place? Dimples. Dimples, the Dimples. birthplace of karaoke. In, in America, was right there across the street. And, and, in fact, the bar rescue guys went in there and tried to fix it up, and they still went out of business. Is that where you used to perform? That's where I used to yeah. perform, exactly. And, and even Robin went in there There's and still a famous video of Tony s- singing on YouTube. What was his Dimples. go-to song in there? Man, Man I, I Feel f- Like a Woman. Oh, my Or God. Barry White. I would go either way. <laughs> now let's get it back to Petros Papadakis, oh, the old P. All right, Petros, before we get into college football, I want to get into – the Dodgers, and of course, the what's Lakers. up with the Lakers, man? Lakers obviously got to come out tonight. Unlike the Sixers, I think they will show up tonight and find a way to win the game. Your thoughts, Pete? Well, it'll be interesting to see how people react. You know, bubble basketball is a lot different than basketball that we're used to. I don't think there's any question about that by the way tony do you know what that uh dimples karaoke bar is now it's an office building right it's a whole foods <laughs> a whole foods you mean whole paycheck well now that amazon yeah. owns it you know you can get a break if you're an amazon uh, prime member right you can go in there and get and you can order it and have it delivered right across the street and uh, tim cates your old producer just went over there and bought a 20 dollars slice of pizza uh, just now, when I was hustling up a slice of pizza, <laughs> and we—I'm not even kidding—and we had some green juice, and uh, we were in the elevator together. But as far as the the bubble stuff goes, it's really weird, you know. That the, you don't have the element of hey, you split, you know, when you were the uh, the road team, and now we're headed back to Dallas, you know, in the in the Clipper situation. Or, uh, hey, we got one out of the late. Like, it's it's very uh, different, the mindset. You just go back into the bubble. So we've never really seen it before. I, You know me. I hate everything and would rather there be nothing on the air and just talk about the karaoke bar. So if it was up to me, we'd have the Clippers and Lakers out uh, in the first round and we could just concentrate on the Dodgers. The Dodgers. Yeah. Doyer. Doyer. And I said it earlier. Doyer. Doyer. Well, is, is Rondo going to play tonight? Is, uh, I think he's he's questionable, I think, for tonight, right? What am I, in the bubble? <laughs> Are you in the bubble, Petros? <laughs> I, I mean, I saw, he had, I saw he had a new hairstyle, a new bubble hairstyle with one of the hair braiders that they made available to the <laughs> players. I saw that he and Anthony Davis uh, had that go. And I know the Clippers looked a lot different without Pat Beverly last night. Mm-hmm. So. I, I don't know, but Rondo would certainly help Anthony Davis because in the first game he had a lot of trouble creating on his own, and the ball's mostly in LeBron's hands, which is great, but there's going to be a lot of criticism to go around if the Lakers get beat tonight. I agree, you know, and it's not my style to criticize, no. but you know the fickle Do- uh, no. the, the fickle, La- fickle Laker fans when I was out there. By the way, happy National Radio Day and the, the 20th anniversary of Fox Sports Radio. Now, you didn't start with us at Fox Sports Radio. You were just starting your broadcasting career in 2000, right? Yeah, I've been offered, frankly, uh, because I love you and we're talking about this. I've been offered a couple jobs by Fox Sports Radio back when I was at 1540 The Ticket. Yes. Remember, Tony? We, that was our first dalliance together in radio. Correct. And I want to apologize for everything I ever did there. 
But, Why? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I was kind of an idiot kid. But our studio but, uh, overlooked the Santa Monica airport, so we put ourselves in danger every day that uh, what's-his-face could crash his airplane right into our studios because the building was right there near the airport, Harry. Harrison Ford. Yeah. Harrison, Harrison Ford. Ford. Right. He crashed right near there mm-hmm. one time, right? In yeah. What, oh, yeah. He crashed on that golf course that was uh, really close to there. Also, Tony, I mean, we were in very harm's, uh, very much the harm's way of the Cougars at the Casa Del Mar Hotel at exactly. the end of Pico, as you know. Exactly uh, right. Exactly right. You know how that is. Hey. But, uh, that was back in the good old days, the good like old to days. say on the show. <laughs> Pre-Robin. Pre-Robin. Good old days, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, the old Casa D, Tony, and if you got in too much trouble at the Casa Del Mar, you could skip across the street to Shutters and, and try your luck over there. Trust but, me, uh, I had I had that whole... I had that whole uh, uh, Atlantic uh, Pacific Avenue stretch covered, man, from the pier all the way north to Venice Beach, all the way over, even across where the UCLA, uh, that the, across that jetty there, where the UCLA crew goes out there and rows every day. Mm. And I go to that little hamburger joint with our bikes, the one on the other side there. What is that called there? It's a classic legendary place, in Petrus. Uh Tony, I'm, I'm not sure, but I do know this. Just like the great Jerry Dumpy said, you had L.A. covered from the desert to the sea. Exactly and, right. and Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yes, the Fox Sports Radio, they offered me a couple jobs uh, right when they were getting started, but they weren't going to be on in L.A. Right. So if I wasn't going to be on in L.A., you know, I'm not much use, uh, you know, kind of like a guy without a mouth at a McDonald's. So, uh, so I, uh, so I, I ended up never really working there until we sort of did like a simulcast, like local slash national show for Fox Sports Radio for a little while. But I like working there now. I still go on a lot of shows over there. And I mean, I didn't, I didn't build the thing like you did. I mean, when you and Andrew had it going in the morning, that was kind of right at the very end of my football career when I was thinking about getting into broadcasting and i remember hearing you guys on the shows and hearing how comfortable you were and how much fun you were having and and and, and wondering how how uh how long it takes to get there in the radio exactly. industry you know to where you're comfortable and having a good time on, on on a show and not worried about every word you were saying and if you said it right or sounded stupid so uh Fox Sports Radio has been around that long. I haven't been in that building forever, though. I mean, it's right down the street, and everybody thinks that we work there because it's got the big sign, you know, in Sherman Oaks right off the 405. But we're over here in Burbank uh, next to the NBC building, like you said, of the ABC building, and the big Disney building with the big stupid Fantasia Mickey Mouse hat and all of that. I love that Burbank studios up there, man. That's Tim Cates. That's his neighborhood there. We used to walk around in Tim Cates' neighborhoods in Burbank. By the way, how's Adam Schiff doing? Is he walking around the streets there lately? Because that's you know that's his district, Burbank. Old pe- old pencil neck. Sh- <laughs> 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 is it is it really his uh, his district? Yes, that's his district, Burbank. Come on, Petro, you're yeah, an no, LA I, guy. I haven't been there in ten years, and you don't even know this stuff. Come on, man. I, I, I'm not very political. Sadly, I'm not political either. That's just because I know Adam Schiff's from Burbank. It's mm. not a political statement. It's a question. It's a it's a knowledge statement. All right, pa- Petros. Well, ask, La- are the Laker well, fans you. are the Laker fans ready to turn on LeBron like the Sixer fans have turned on this team that's down two games to none and looks lifeless against the Boston Celtics? Yeah, they will, as you know, Tony. <laughs> they, they are. Uh, they, there's there's really only a couple untouchables in the Lakers' minds, and that is obviously, given the circumstances, Kobe Bryant. Yes, but it wasn't that way. When uh, it was Shaq versus Kobe in town, I mean, you remember that people took sides and a lot of them took a side against Kobe. And you had a lot of people in town who were bigger Kobe fans than they were Laker fans in that era. Uh, The really untouchable Laker is Magic Johnson uh, on the court, uh, not as a front office guy. Uh, LeBron's not theirs. I mean, they're happy he's here and they'll kiss his ass if he does well and they'll act like they like his production company. But <laughs> in real life, <laughs> if he doesn't deliver a championship, they'll they'll throw him out on his shield. Will you be the first guy to burn a Joe's jersey right out there in front of the Warner Brothers studios in Burbank? 
Yeah, that's my style. You know, I just, you, know, whatever I, you know me, Tony. You know, if I, something starts to bother me, I just light a fire to it. Actually, I've, I've burned a lot of bridges uh, over the years. Never anything actually literally. Uh, but I do think people in town would be would would be pretty quick to throw him in the garbage and talk about his gray beard and his fake hair and all the weird excuses he's made over the years and the people they call the LeBron sexuals that defend him and all that. The LeBron uh, sexuals, is wow. that what they call him? You've never heard of the LeBron sexuals? No, I never no. heard that term before. Oh, it's like those are like the people that are like like Nick Wright. You know the guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah right? yes. Yeah, he's a LeBron sexual. Mm, like okay. he's a... He's, I mean, what you would think he'd be like a LeBronologist, like a complete mm-hmm. LeBron expert, like Windhorse, uh, that yes, guy. Yes, yes. You know, but, but, <laughs> but I think the media term in the Twitter world, you know, is LeBron sexual. And I, wow. I think that would get a lot louder and you'd see a lot more argument if he does get ousted from the bubble. Well, Harry's one of those LeBronologists. No, no, He's a LeBron hog. No, I'm not. He's a LeBron no, worshiper. I love Kawhi Leonard. Well, I would love Yeah, him. I love Kawhi Leonard. How much has the the Clippers fan base like increased since? Not much. Not much. <laughs> <laughs> you better hope Clipper Daryl's not listening to this conversation. He'll come up to the studio there, Petros. You know the Clippers are really interesting because they have a, a great owner. That, mm-hmm. You know the Lakers are a mom and pop shop. You know the Lakers uh, that's their income, and obviously they make a whole lot of money. Uh, and it's a great brand and product, one of the great sports brands of all time, really. But it's still a mom and pop shop. I mean, the Clippers are owned by a guy who has, he can build his own arena. He can do whatever he wants in the city. And uh, I think Balmer's Clipper play, regardless of who's on the team, because they were a lot of fun with Chris Paul and Blake Griffin. And, you know, if they win a championship, people will be excited, but it'll be like when the Kings won the championship Mm -hmm. in town. I mean, the, the Clipper fans do exist. They're in the stadium. It's a more authentic experience. I don't know if you'd agree, Tony, oh, yeah. when you're at a Clipper game. Uh, Absolutely. Whether it was, it's, yeah, you know, I mean, it's more of a, you know, it's more like an NBA game any other place in the world. The Laker game is like oh, you're wondering if the girl's boobs are fake <laughs> and uh, who who she came with and whose agent uh, this guy's sitting in and what celebrities on the floor. You know, the Clipper game is mostly – uh, just more of a normal NBA experience. I and remember going over a- to the Clippers practice facility, and, you know, it's, it was like a very, very free and easy thing. And the Sixers' current general manager was the best player then, and he would go over there, and you'd go over and talk to him. Every, you could talk to everybody on that team. And not that the Lakers didn't talk to you, but the Lakers were always the royalty of the Los Angeles sports scene, and the Clippers were always the bastard stepchild, you know what I mean? And then they always had to fight for attention there. And then a couple years when they were better than the Lakers while I was there, you know, nobody wanted to acknowledge their existence, especially the Laker well, fans. <laughs> Tony, I mean, they've been – I mean, don't look now, but the Clippers, uh, I mean, they didn't have a better record this year. They were obviously – you know, they are obviously very competitive – the Clippers were beating the crap out of the Lakers on the court and record-wise for the last decade, you know? I mean, but the Lakers were still in the news all, all the time because Alonzo Ball or, you know, whatever story they had going on at the time, D'Angelo Russell talking about Nick Young, talking about Iggy Azalea, you know, all this stupid crap we have to cover <laughs> when it comes to the Lakers. It's like TMZ. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's the worst. Yeah. I mean, but, you know, it, it's, I, don't, I don't know anything else, you know, to be honest. Uh, but uh, it'll be very – I think the Clippers play is for the future, 20 years from now, same as the Rams play, same as the play for the, the – even the L.A. Chargers, you know. Football in L.A. is really awkward. Nobody's really – you know, people are, are, are Eagles fans because they've been going to the Eagles bar for 20 years and watching those teams – you know, we don't have uh, we don't have that kind of loyalty, maybe mm-hmm. to the Raiders, you know, but but and that's a whole different story. So it's not about me, a 40 year old guy or even, you know, guys that are 25. It's about my kids and them becoming Rams or Chargers or Clippers fans as they're going to be moving into these big, beautiful stadiums and, and try to make a run at the Lakers and the Dodgers who have been on top of oh, the yeah. landscape. 
No, you ain't. No, you ain't. No, you ain't. Don't sleep on the Padres, uh. While we have you on, it's time to bash the Pac-12, but I got to give him love. You see, who Larry Scott just hired his uh, his replacement, apparently, over there. Merton Hanks. Yes. Merton Hanks is now going to run all the football operations for your Pac-12, the first conference, to bail like the softies that they are, Petros. Well, look, we're, we're going to have the freaking longest ass neck in, in in the world. Exactly. I mean, we might not be any. We might not be able to compete on the field or financially, but our neck is going to be long as hell. And if there is a celebration to be had, we're going to wave our neck all around like a giant chicken and freak out. Exactly. And so that that I'm looking forward to. Now it must uh, be hard to get one of those. Uh, what are those things called now that people are using? The, the, the mask things that you the pull The gators? Up. The gators. Oh, so for oh, him to get a gator, hand. they would have to have it, they would have, to have, to have it specially made to fit all the way up his neck to cover his nose and all, all the way past his eyes. Two words, Tony. Leg warmer. <laughs> Leg warmer. <laughs> now I have a question. Was his neck really that long or was his head just oh. small for his No, body? his, his neck, neck was, was really long. Oh, yeah. Both. But he did have a pebble head. Uh <laughs> Now, uh, maybe he still does. Yeah, but at least he knows, for, unlike Larry Scott, who what, came from the tennis channel to run the Pac-12 network, Merton Hanks was a great, he was a great player at Iowa. He was a great player at, in, in, in the NFL, in college football yes. at Iowa, and he was a great player in the, for the 49ers with the Super Bowl right. and a great defensive back. Tony, I mean, with, with all due respect, because you know I love her, Miss Robin could take over the Pac-12, and we'd be in way better shape. I mean, <laughs> anybody is anybody's better than uh, than Larry Scott. Wow, that uh, says a lot. Wow. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, put, I mean, in in her in her uh, clogs, Miss Robin could go handle that job way wow. better than. I mean, this dude has crucified West Coast football, and it's been long before a pandemic. But uh, just to advance the story. I'll tell you, uh, I looked at the headlines the other day, whether it was from the Big Ten and the big uh, rigmarole they got going on or the SEC coming out with a schedule or Auburn's got positive tests, they're pushing forward. Uh, Scott Frost won't shut up. I mean, all of these programs, and many of them consider themselves to be blue bloods, they're pushing and fighting for the players. Uh, the, the coach is going to get paid anyway. You know, I mean – they want these guys to have their experience and real football people understand that i think uh and then i looked at the pac-12 headlines and at my alma mater usc they were giving uh celebrating giving special rainbow social justice backpacks to all of the athletes and there was a round of twitter congratulations and look at our great backpacks i mean not even a murmur of anybody wanting to play not even a, 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 a lifting of the finger of the head coach to say, hey, you know, we told these guys they're going to be able to play and we recruited them away from a lot of places that are playing and we have to answer for that. I mean, nothing, Tony, just complete silence. And if you didn't think West Coast football was dead with the pay disparity because of the dumbass a TV deal we did a decade ago, I mean, it's dead and buried now because uh, these guys that – I mean, it doesn't even feel like their coaches want to fight for them at all. or it, Right or wrong, you know, and, and whether the coaches think they'll be able to do anything for these guys or not, I mean, at least act like you care uh, exactly. about fulfilling these guys' dreams. Well, that's and, why uh, you're a man and you have your Hello Kitty I'm backpack. When every, nobody even thought about having a Hello Kitty backpack as an adult male with children. <laughs> That's right. I've done a lot of things that no one ever thought of. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, bring in the funk, bring in the heat, bring in the noise on National Radio Day. It should be a national holiday. It's up to us to get it on the ballot, especially in California where they put anything on the ballot. The oh. proposition, proposition what, 69. National Radio Day should be a national holiday, and we should have it off every single year with paid vacation, paid benefits, double time. Petros, it's not just National Radio Day. 
we discussed this. It's also the 20th anniversary of Fox Sports well, hello, Radio. Hello, Robin. We were talking at it, but the beginning of the know. segment. And so I hate to do it to you. If you would let me finish, <laughs> I'm going to see if he knows. I'm saying coincidence. <laughs> and then he's supposed to say it, unlike okay. Andrew. See, it's, there was a point to this, I'm Tony. sorry. I thought maybe you weren't paying attention. She was attention. trying to set oh. something up. Yeah, but then I don't want her to say something that was already said, and then people say, no. didn't you know you already said that uh, 10 minutes ago? I knew you already said that. I was hoping he actually was able to finish the sentence, unlike Andrew Siciliano. All right, set it up again. Oh, no, no we blew the bit. Blew no, the no, bit. because we didn't blow the punchline. Petros, <laughs> National Radio Day and the 20th anniversary of Fox Sports Radio. Coincidence? Yeah. <laughs> what is wrong with you guys? I think he's joking. I don't know. I had a ball in the bit. I, I thought I was just supposed to look No, it it's something that shows you that even at 40, you're too young to get it. The answer is, I think not. I don't know where that oh. started. Remember, coincidence? Right. I think not. But Siciliano didn't get it either. He didn't get it yeah, either, yeah. and he's 50 now. Right. For God's sake. <laughs> See what happens when you go to the West Coast? You live out there. The conferences are all soft. The stinking basketball team's soft. The fans are soft. Everybody's soft. Silk bra soft. He's running for political office down in the, uh, the, down HB. In the HB. What the hell's happening out there? Every time I open my mouth, my brain falls out, Tony. That's how stupid I am. <laughs> No, we love you. We're Pet- all idiots. Yeah, that's why we do this. <laughs> that's why we do it. Ladies and gentlemen, Petros Papadakis, the old P. Follow him on Twitter at the old, not T-H-E-E, T-H-E, the old P. Right, Petros? It's not the, T-H-E-E. That's a, that's it, yeah. Like the or Megan, what was her name? Uh, the Megan, Megan the Stallion. Megan the Stallion. Yeah, yeah. Petros oh, yeah. the Stallion. He was a real stallion back in the days. At USC. W-A-T. Exactly right, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Petros, thanks, brother. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs> I love you guys. Thank L- you love so you much too. for having me and my best to your audience. And Tony, you're an inspiration. Thank I you. I love you. Thank you. I love you too, Petros. The great pet. Say hi to Tim Cakes. Say hi to that other guy that you work with. What's his name? Matt uh, Money Smith. Yeah, Money Smith. Matt Money Smith. And uh, Raider Ryan. And <laughs> 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 